expertise is in American religious history. My area of specialty, if I have one, is sociology of religion. I'm a historian, and I work mostly on Muslim-Jewish-Christian relations across time. The question of how to study religious tolerance is about as difficult a question as, as any uh, study of a, of, a, of a complex cultural phenomenon. I mean, the first thing we have to ask ourselves is, what do we mean by religious tolerance? Uh, and that itself is a very complicated question with a history of the deepest thinkers uh, in not only the Western tradition, but in the Islamic tradition, the Jewish tradition, thinking about what that would mean. What does it mean to tolerate another religion? It happens best and most often at the local level, at the grassroots level where people in small settings interact with one another informally. People's religious practices are something we don't ordinarily see or experience. And you have to go. You have to go into those communities, into those congregations, sit through a worship service, see what's going on. I think that's very powerful. And if more people took the time or, or maybe had the courage to do that kind of thing, just to visit, just to see, I think that could make a big difference. There was a very conservative pastor. He planned an event where they were going to burn a copy of the Koran. They had the bonfire lit. He had the Koran in his hand. And a guy on a motorcycle zips through and grabs the Koran and saves it <laughs> and became the hero of the day, as it turned out. <laughs> I think there is a great deal of, um, uh, of, of concern about Islam, particularly since 9-11. Uh, a lot of Americans worry that Islam at its core is deeply political, uh, that it's deeply anti-American, that it's deeply anti-Christian. One of the ways to become intolerant is precisely to think you know the answer to what religious tolerance should look like, that only this, perhaps only the kind of tolerance we've cultivated as a culture, the kind of tolerance that our society has uh, prided itself on having, only that kind of tolerance constitutes what we recognize as religious tolerance. And that itself is a, is a, a primary catalyst of religious intolerance. One of my teachers in graduate school was Diana Eck, and one of the big things that she does is take students um, into religious communities, not their own. She takes them to visit mosques, she takes them to visit Hindu temples, she takes the, the, the Christians into the Jewish synagogues and she takes the Jews into Christian services and, and all of that kind of thing. And it's extraordinary because people's religious practices are something we don't ordinarily see or experience. Even before the country was founded, I think of John Locke's Constitution for the Carolinas, there's a very deep awareness of the fact of the religious diversity and of using religious diversity as a way of creating a politically tolerant space. More and more there really are at the, at the local neighborhood level oftentimes, at the local community level, uh, there's a great deal of let's call it interfaith um, activity and activism. Um, often that happens around uh, social services for instance. So there's a crisis in the community, there might be a natural disaster, people are left homeless, they're left hungry. Uh, who comes in to help? It's often religious organizations, religious leaders who mobilize their congregations, work together across religious lines for a common purpose. When we ask ourselves what kinds of societies are really successful at being tolerant, it's very hard to arrive at an answer that isn't already to some extent shaped by our own inclinations, our prejudices, our views of what the right structuring of the world should be. And it's also hard to, to decide whether something is more positive than negative. A somewhat broader issue that pertains to some of the other countries, including Germany, is that those immigrants are not allowed to become full citizens. They can come into the country as guest workers and stay for long periods of time, but then they're always second-class citizens. And so that has raised kind of different issues when, when you have maybe as many as 10 or even 15 percent of the population that are there legally, but they're not citizens. How then do you think about those issues? More and more, I think the Chinese government has come to believe that religion and religious tolerance is good for the economy, it's good for politics, and it's good for China's role in the broader world. 
Uh, so that's a pragmatic view of why religious tolerance is, is a good thing. The Chinese government continues to be atheist itself, but it's, it's less hostile to religion than it once was. Um, so I think with that kind of pragmatic attitude, probably developing also in other parts of Asia and other parts of the world, uh, we could see growing religious tolerance in different parts of the world. I think it's very important uh, for Americans to treat other religions other than their own with respect. Whether you're a religious person or not, it's just pragmatic to, to do that. I would say that the greatest thing we can do as individuals, as around the dinner table, in the neighborhood, speaking with our friends, to try to cultivate religious tolerance within ourselves or within others, is simply to interrogate our own certainties. Whenever we think we know what Islam is, Whenever we think we know what Christianity is, what our own faith is, we should ask ourselves, well, why am I so certain? How am I so sure it can't take many other forms? And the minute we start to ask us, ourselves those things, we start to find that actually uh, there's a lot of things we, we're not so sure about in terms of our knowledge of other religions or our knowledge of our own. And from that humility, from that willingness to think you don't actually know the truth, arises the possibility of a kind of thoroughgoing tolerance. What if somebody said, what's your attitude toward physics? You say, oh, I'm tolerant toward physics. What's your attitude toward science? Oh, I'm tolerant toward science. I'm willing to tolerate those people. Well, that's kind of a dumb answer. Um, you'd say you sort of maybe appreciate physics, or you don't understand it, or you'd like to know more, or you know you don't know much about it. That was more what we were hearing, especially from Muslim leaders, Buddhist leaders, Hindu leaders. They, as leaders of minority religions, knew a lot about Christianity. I think over time, religious tolerance has certainly grown in the U.S. We're not perfect, but we can certainly see progress. So there's always hope that even the groups that look the most intolerant today uh, can change.